With such tragedies happening right down the street in New York, it's easy to feel helpless. But I had one question. Why do some people never get sick no matter what's happening? What's the secret? These are things you do over a period of time and strengthen your system. That the next virus that comes, you may be in a little better place to handle. So because I was locked up, I had no choice but to cook. Honestly, I've never really cooked that much for myself, but now it was a question of survival. With some help from Google, I soon got the hang of it. Fresh food was feeling great for my skin and I was sleeping less too. All that talk about processed food wasn't a joke. Some studies say bad dietary choices get encoded into your DNA and gut biome. And because it affects your DNA, it also gets passed on to your offspring. So your diet isn't just for you, it's for your future kids too. This understanding is strong in India. In Ayurveda, they take care of every little ingredient that goes into your body. They understood that if your ingredients are imbalanced, your sauce is a mess and so are you. So when this whole coronavirus stuff started, the first thing I did was to look back at my roots to see how I could strengthen myself with the wisdom of the Eastern sciences. Ayurveda and Siddha and naturopathy is growing big time in the West, particularly in Europe, very big. In India, of course, it's dying because they have to approve it for us to take it. Without their approval, we cannot take it. Right now, an Ayurvedic doctor is going to Another medical college just like you go for four years or five years or whatever, an Ayurvedic doctor or one who wants to practice Ayurveda should not go to a four-year course. You have to invest your life in it, otherwise it won't happen. Traditionally, from childhood, they learn to feel the herbs, they learn to feel the people, the pulse and this and that. This is a developing a certain intuition where we don't go by the symptoms that you're showing on your body right now. We don't see your temperature and say, this is what it is. We don't look at those symptoms. We learn to look much deeper into the system to identify what exactly is right and wrong with your system. This will take a different level of involvement. That involvement is missing right now. We're looking at things, if I do this much, I must get this job or I must get this place in the world. With this, these systems may not function very well. You must have heard this, the same medicine one doctor gives in Ayurveda and Siddha, the same dog medicine in one person's hands it works very well, in another person's hands it doesn't work well because the person who gives it is as important as the medicine because it's not working just by its chemical composition. So the Eastern medicine is all about prevention. It's about maintaining the agni or the heat in the body. Yoga practices also go a long way in this regard. And there's a simple yoga practice that you can learn from home to increase your lung capacity and immunity over a period of time. In Ayurveda, over 1,500 herbs, vegetables, and fruits have been identified with unique medicinal qualities. If only we knew the quality of the food that we eat every day. Recently, I came to know that my great-grandfather was a hugely respected Ayurveda Vaidya in Kerala. He was so skilled that people openly declared, if you go to him for treatment, your ailment will never return. There are stories that he was called all the way from Kerala in South India to Shimla in North India to treat a viceroy or a governor there. But unfortunately, this knowledge and skill didn't carry past his generation. I guess this has to do with rapid westernization. 
but the cultural changes are happening on both sides now. Today, many staples of the Indian diet and other Ayurvedic foods have become superfoods in the U.S. Daily consumption of neem leaves, turmeric is anyway available. Now, they are making what is called as nano turmeric, where the absorption rate is way higher than the normal turmeric, which also greatly enhances your immune system. Every day, a little bit of, uh, let's say, eight to ten leaves of neem and a little bit of turmeric in warm water, if you drink this, your ability to fight external organisms is greatly enhanced. If you soak the gooseberry or the amla or the nalikai in honey overnight, along with uh, some broken pepper, black pepper, every day about three spoons, three times a day. It's, it works best, all these things work best when you're on an empty stomach, that's the first thing that you take. Uh, if you do these things, you can sh see a significant increase in your immune system. I would say in four to eight weeks, one can see significant betterment of one's immune system. I've also started including sprouts or microgreens, ghee and drumstick leaves or moringa into my soups and salads. Morning start with a ginger turmeric herbal tea including a dash of black pepper, lemon juice and honey. Yeah, I'm feeling really healthy right now. I tend to get pretty lazy, so a good brisk walk helps me to shake off all the lethargy. Exercise is supposed to flush out bacteria in the lungs and help antibodies and white blood cells. And even I know those are key to fighting off illnesses. I started jogging a little today, but personally, for real hardcore cardio, I prefer something more entertaining like a dance workout. It is very important that we stay physically active. Okay. That because our ability to fight anything is far better when we are physically active. And if you are mentally exuberant, it helps a lot. But exuberance may not happen to you overnight if you have not done that all your life. So there are simple things to do. Uh, if you come to southern Indian villages and small towns, you will see, if they have to speak to you within two feet distance, as a mark of respect, they'll always cover their nose and mouth, the nostrils and mouth, whatever is coming out. What is mine, my, my trouble should remain with me, should never come to you, this is the attitude. I think we just have to bring this back, that we cover our nostrils and mouth when we speak to somebody within two feet and stand away from people. These are all things which are well established in our culture. This uh, the kissing the cheek culture, hugging culture without any reason, uh, you know, simply just about anywhere. These are all things we've imported in the last 10-15 years. It's time to understand the value of this, especially considering the density of the population, yeah. not only because of this coronavirus, every day we are transmitting something or the other. So the Indian tradition is full of ways to keep your body and the place you live clean and free of bacteria. Like the Namaste. It was so cute to see leaders all across the world doing Namaste all over the place. There was also the elbow bump, but I didn't really get that. Because if you cough into your elbow and then you bump it into somebody else, Folding your hands is neat, clean, and it also has a deeper meaning. My last trip to the Indian grocery store for the next few weeks was to buy some Indian lamps to light up around the apartment. Everyone was obviously in masks, but the storekeeper was happily whistling a Bollywood song from under his mask. I already have lots of soy candles and I light incense every day just because it creates such a soothing and warm atmosphere. I was wondering why there was so much drama the other day in India just to light a lamp. And I know it's kind of a sensitive topic. People light lamps and candles all over the world. From the Chinese, Hebrews, even the Aborigines of Australia, many cultures use fire as a source of purification, health and gratitude.
I definitely don't do it because of any particular religion. I do it because I like the atmosphere it creates. The element of fire in the Bhuta Shuddhi system of yoga and our ability to stand up as a strong life are very related. If we want to find out whether you are alive or dead, we will check whether it's warm or cold. That means whether the fire is on or gone. Everything that you call as life on this planet is only because of the fire of the sun. A fireball is burning there. Only because of that life has happened. All the other ingredients may be there, it's like cooking. Everything may be there, no fire, no cooking. So life has cooked itself up mainly because of the fire of the sun. The basic energy in the world is just that. So using fire as a way of keeping ourselves well is very much a part of the yogic system. Keep a lamp in your bedroom in a safe distance from you where you sleep and let it burn every night. It'll make a world of difference for you. I do some of these traditional things every day, but... My fire alarm isn't exactly happy with my cooking, so I'm keeping the bigger fires away for now. Incense is often made of frankincense, which is scientifically proven to have antiseptic properties and is used to prevent bacterial infections of the gums. Apart from the aromatherapy involved in lighting incense, it also cleanses the air of bacteria. This is just about creating the right kind of atmosphere so that your entire system becomes strong and able to fight whatever illnesses may come your way. Every traditional person washes their hands and feet before they enter the house, definitely before eating, before cooking. My grandmother does a whole purification process to all the fruits and vegetables just as they reach the house. Our tradition is already speaking like the advice of the World Health Organization, sometimes even in more detail. While I don't want to sound like a doomsdayer, this kind of outbreak may not be the last of what we see over the course of our lifetime. This is totally man-made. It has to do with the deforestation we are doing and getting more in touch with wild animals. Climate change what makes it more hospitable for viruses and bacteria. The only thing that's really in our hands is to, to strengthen our immunity today to be able to handle whatever virus may come tomorrow.